Hi, my name is Larry Sparks, and I have a supernatural story that I believe is meant to warn and protect you about what is coming upon the earth, because the Holy Spirit revealed to me the name of a false prophet that I believe is in the process of deceiving millions and sadly even leading countless individuals to an eternal hell separate from the Lord. In 2 Peter 2 verse 1, it says this, But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. You know, Satan has an end time plan. And when the Holy Spirit revealed to me the name of this false prophet, which by the way, I didn't expect, I was shocked and surprised by the name and the identity of this, which I'm gonna reveal in just a moment. But the Lord highlighted what Jesus actually described about the end times. When Jesus gave signs of the times leading up to his return, he could have told us anything. But interestingly enough, in the scripture, Jesus says in Matthew 24, three, The disciples were saying, tell us, when will these things be? Talking about the signs of the times. And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus could have responded anyway. He could have given them charts. He could have given them blueprints. He could have said things about a universal currency or a one world government. Those things are most likely involved in the second coming of Jesus, but he didn't say any of that. This is what Jesus said. He said, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and deceive many. What does that mean? Are people going to show up and actually claim to be Jesus? I don't think necessarily that's what Jesus is meaning, although that's happened throughout history. Jesus is is basically telling them that there are going to be many who come in his name and say these doctrines or these teachings absolutely and accurately represent Jesus when in fact they do not. And as Peter said, they are destructive heresies that will sadly lead people into error. Now, I want to give you some signposts of this false prophet, and then I'm going to reveal its identity. Number one, this false prophet teaches that Bible truth is up for discussion. In other words, the Bible takes a knee to the direction of culture. So culture can say a certain lifestyle is acceptable and appropriate. And even though the Bible says it's sin, doesn't matter because the Bible bows to culture. That is a sign that this false prophet is at work. Another sign and another doctrine that this false prophet teaches is what I call Doobie Brothers theology. In other words, the Doobie Brothers was a band and they had a song, Jesus is just all right. And this false prophet teaches, listen, Jesus is just okay with any way you wanna live. You can do whatever you want. You can sin however much you want. There's grace, man, it's okay. Listen, God's grace is lavish, extreme, and extravagant, but God wants to make sure you are protected at any of the commandments that he has. They are perimeters for your preservation. They are boundaries to lead you into life. And if there's any teaching that tells you you can sin and that you can embrace any way of living and God is okay with that. Listen, we do not accept Doobie Brothers theology. Jesus is not okay with all of that. Why? Because Jesus loves you too much for you to be led into destruction and error. Another thing is this, third signpost of this false prophet is what I call repackaged universalism. In other words, always lead to God. Well, you know what? You don't even need to receive Jesus as Lord because you are already saved. Jesus has already paid the price, which is true. However, by faith, you and I need to accept, we need to receive what Jesus has done. But this false prophet teaches, it's already been accomplished. You don't need to do anything. Even the devil at the end of the day might be saved and they would call it ultimate reconciliation. This is absolutely false. And this is a cardinal doctrine of this false prophet. And fourth and finally is what we call the universal Christ heresy. This teaching is very concerning because it almost blends in a new age theology into Christ, basically saying Christ is a consciousness. 
Christ or Messiah Jesus. He's just a spirit. He, he's, he's part of the atmosphere. He's part of all of these other different religions. There is not one way, one door or one point of entry to the Father. There's many ways you can experience Jesus and he's part of a lot of different things and they call it the universal Christ. That is heretical and that is another expression or a signpost that this false prophet is in operation. So as I was talking to the Holy Spirit, naturally I wanted to know what is the name of this false prophet. Because as Bill Johnson once said, if you spot him, you got him. When it comes to a demon, when it comes to recognizing an evil spirit at work, when you know what's at work and you're able to identify it or call out its name, which is probably why Jesus at times actually asked demons for their name or why they revealed or exposed their name, we want it to be exposed so that you can resist it. We want it to be exposed so that you can be protected, so you can safeguard your family, so that Gen Z and future generations would not go down the slippery slope that this evil false prophet is paving the way for. So what is the name of this false prophet? I asked the Holy Spirit and he said this, Larry, it's not what you expect. It has a name. He didn't give me the name of an individual. It's the name of an entity. And that name is Progressive Christianity, where basically the Bible is being rewritten. Jesus is being redefined. Sin is being turned upside down. Why? Because there is a culture in the earth that actually wants the blessing of God, sadly terrifyingly. They want to enjoy the blessing of God. They want to have some level of eternal security. They want to know that God is there taking care of all their needs while at the same time they can live any way they want. And I believe that is progressive Christianity. It is sadly seeping its way in almost undetected in certain places. But here's the good news when you identify some of its cardinal doctrines, and I just went through four of them, when you're able to recognize things like that, you can resist it and you will not get caught up in the onslaught of this false prophet. Your children will be able to discern and decipher when it is in operation. And here's the good news that is coming because just as there is a false prophet alive in our midst called progressive Christianity, God has always confronted false prophets as he did in the days of Elijah. And I believe many prophetic voices, reputable prophetic voices are saying, we are moving towards a Mount Carmel confrontation. What does that mean? It means that the false prophets like progressive Christianity are going to have a confrontation, not necessarily with just one Elijah type of prophet. I believe God is raising you up right now. God's raising up a company of people who move in the spirit and the power of Elijah, who is the Holy Spirit. And I believe what's going to happen is this. Progressive Christianity is going to be exposed for the sham that it is. Why? There's no fire in those places. God is not going to grace that message with his fire. God only authenticates and confirms his word. As the scripture says, he confirms his word with signs following. And when you evaluate these environments, when you evaluate congregations or communities or gatherings that are teaching these false things, can I tell you what there'll be an absence of? There'll be an absence of the fire. There won't be healings and miracles and deliverances. Why? Because the very thing that Jesus wants to liberate people from in those environments, I believe those things that Jesus wants to deliver and set people free from are accepted tolerated and celebrated. But Jesus wants to come even now and manifest himself as the deliverer and liberator. He came to set the captives free. So as you can imagine, if there's any doctrine or system of thinking that actually encourages people to live comfortably in captivity, it's time for people to rise up with the spirit and power of Elijah, where we are going to see a confrontation between the powers of light and the powers of darkness, where that progressive message is confronted and called out. And I believe the fire of God is going to fall. 
not just on a mountain somewhere. I believe the fire of God is going to fall on your life. I believe God's going to authenticate those who are preaching the truth of the Word of God, who are upholding the Scriptures, who preach truth in an era and an age where there is no such thing as absolute truth, where anything goes, where sin is being consistently redefined and accepted. I believe God is raising you up. If you're listening to my voice right now, God is raising you up, I believe, to repair the breach. He's raising you up so that your children and children's children, so that future generations would actually be protected from this false prophet that is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I am convinced that we are moving quickly towards an outpouring of the fire of God to where when you preach truth, when you preach the gospel, when you preach things or declare things or teach things or believe things like Jesus is the only way to God the Father, when you teach that there is such a thing called sin and Jesus came to liberate us from that, when you teach that Jesus sets people free from demonic torment and mental torment, I believe when we teach those things, the fire of God's gonna fall, people are gonna be set free and liberated and this false prophet of progressive Christianity is going to be exposed. So I pray for you even right now that the Holy Spirit would alert you, that the Holy Spirit would give you red flags. There'd be sirens going off when you start to hear or even sense some of these false doctrines being propagated in environments that are close to you. When you see people in your world, in your life, family members or friends who are listening with itching ears perhaps to some of these false things, I pray that you would come in with a spirit of love, kindness and boldness and be a dynamic truth teller where you will liberate them from falling into the clutches of this demonic net that I believe is aimed at a generation. You are called to be a dynamic, Holy Ghost filled truth teller to where that spirit of Elijah, as it was in the days of the prophet Elijah, where he basically said this, you know what? If the Lord is God, then let fire fall from heaven and consume the sacrifice. And all the false prophets were there doing everything they knew how to do to try to conjure up, to try to manufacture fire. And I can tell you this right now, that progressive Christianity and all of its hallmark demonic ideologies that I just shared, no matter what they do, they might try to appeal to the mind, they might try to appeal to the heart and to the emotions, but one thing that that false prophet and its religion will be consistently absent of is the fire and the power of God. As it was in the days of the prophets of Baal, so it is now where they did everything they could to manufacture an encounter with God. And it says in the scriptures that as all these false prophets did what they could to try to make fire fall to try to get a response from their false gods, it basically said nothing happened. But then Elijah stepped onto the scene and I'm praying right now for an impartation upon you for the spirit and power and the voice of Elijah where he stepped onto the scene. He stepped onto the center stage of the cultural conversation and he basically said, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And even right now, I pray that along with you, my friend who's watching, we pray, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let it be known today in the earth. Let it be known today in America, in Europe, in the British Isles, in Africa, in Asia. Let it be known in Australia, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let it be known today that you are God. And after he prayed that prayer, it says fire fell from heaven. We're living in the days of fire. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would be a voice and a carrier of that Pentecostal fire that exposes, that confronts, that calls out the false prophet of the day, progressive Christianity.